solo leveling took a big risk by rejecting the big new anime trend. The highly anticipated anime adaptation of solo leveling was able to get away with a slow-paced first episode, even though the following one was much better by comparison. The anime decided to not conform to a new trend, recently championed by hits Oshi no Keo and Fryeran, series that have successfully debuted with a 40 minute plus first episode to give themselves enough time to set up the story. Sometimes translated as only I level up, this adaptation of Chigong's South Korean web novel revolves around a weak hunter, a human with supernatural powers, named Sung Jin Woo, who gains the unique ability to level up. The first two episodes take place before that happens, which could have justified presenting them in one neat package. The problem with splitting the prologue into two installments is that nothing in the first episode effectively demonstrates that solo leveling deserves its hype. It isn't until the exciting episode number two of solo leveling that viewers finally realize why Manhui and web novel readers have been rightly excited about the adaptation. Solo leveling lives up to the hype starting from episode number two. Produced by A1 Pictures, based on the web novel by Chigong. Episode number one gave viewers a weak hero wanting to prove himself, a common trope, whose party stumbles into a rare second boss room in a dungeon. That first death in the debut episode isn't enough to capture the attention of first-time viewers who are not already familiar with the story. The mystery that the premiere creates about the second boss is only fully explored in the following episode. In fact, the terrifying facial expression of the statue in episode number two truly captivates viewers, especially since it shares the best qualities of Attack on Titan's iconic giants. Episode number two also shows the party suffering unique and brutal ramifications from failing to answer a deadly riddle, as opposed to just being killed. While graphic deaths are intense and frequent, they aren't even the highlight of the episode. The same can be said of the helplessness and eventual eroding of bravery among Jinwa's more experienced party members. While episode number one ends with everyone terrified, it pales in comparison to the trauma they sustain in episode number two. Jinwa's weakness and desire to expose himself to danger to provide for his family, seen in the first episode, is also just another bland retelling of a cliché situation. More interestingly, Jinwoo later adopts an unprecedentedly realistic and understandable mindset in his final moments that shatters his original good boy persona. He becomes resentful of his situation and even condemns those who abandoned him. This not only makes Jinwoo a more controversial character, but sets up a desire in the viewer for him to somehow avenge himself. Clearly, the second episode has many other captivating elements when compared to the series debut. That and the fact that the latest installment ends right when the real story begins, serve as further proof that the two episodes should have perhaps been combined into one truly memorable premiere. Of course, Solo Leveling's success proves that the series got away with not adhering to the latest anime trend, and that's what matters. Solo Leveling airs new episodes on Saturdays on Crunchyroll.